So, welcome back to another episode. And have you ever bought an RPG you had high hopes for? You spent a lot of money on it, you brought it home, you put a bunch of hours into it, and you just couldn't make a connection to the game? No matter how hard you tried, and you tried? Yeah, we've all kind of been there, and uh, today I want to talk about some RPGs that I bought back in the day when they first came out in the early 90s, and I really tried to enjoy them and get into their worlds, and for some reason or another, I just couldn't do it. The game, there was something going on there that was kind of like stopping me from having that entertaining joy that I bought the game for in the first place. And I talked about a few games in the past that had done that. Might of Magic and, and Lagoon, I, I tell you, Might of Magic I had high hopes for. The game was punishing with so many random battles, it destroyed me. You know, going down a dungeon and having to fight like 20 ogres and being there for about 45 minutes and then you die at the end. That can kind of crush your enthusiasm quite a bit for these types of games. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd talk about some games I have never talked about. And guys, down below, tell me about an RPG that you bought, you had high hopes for, you were excited about, you got the game, and ah, it just didn't connect with you. So please just leave it down below. I will start off with this one, and I I bought this probably a couple of years ago to have a physical copy of it because I only ever had the cartridge of it, and it was a girlfriend of mine that acquired the cartridge and uh, handed it off to me, and I, I was like, wow, a brand new RPG, Arcana. I cannot wait to play this. Now, I start playing it, and as you know, I'm a big fan of Fantasy Star and all these types of games, and I put it in, and I was like, oh, where's the overhead kind of uh, town? And it wasn't, it was a first person scrolling town. And it had like five shops and that was it. And I was like, okay, so it's not very in depth. There's not a lot to it. And then I noticed that all of the characters that I was talking to were on cards. And that the entire game was card themed, which is not a bad thing. I'm not against card games, but I was like, what? So I'd be introduced to some characters, and they would be on cards, and I was like, why do they have to be on cards? Why can't they just be regular characters standing there? And I was like, okay, I'll just go with it. And of course, my characters were on cards as well. I get into my very first dungeon, I'm fighting monsters, and all the monsters are on cards, and I'm like, Okay, sure, so it's like a card battle game, but it's a traditional RPG. The only difference is that we have cards. Uh, that the monsters are on cards, and I I don't know what it was, it just rubbed me the wrong way, but it wasn't what turned me off the game uh, entirely, but it just, uh, I guess it was the town? The town just had nothing going on in it, it was, there was not a lot of in-depth stuff, it was, you know, obviously, bite cards versus cards, rinse and repeat for a long time, bite a lot of card monsters with your card characters, and that was really it, it didn't, I never really felt like I got into the story with Arcana. I, I really wanted to. And it was a game I spent a lot of time. I always remember sitting in, you know, coming back from uh, England when I was 21 and getting the game and sitting in the basement playing this game for long periods of time, but I just never made a connection. I never drastically hated the game, but I never connected with it. Absolutely. So that was that. Wow. Did I ever have high hopes? For Seven Saga, wow! I, I was going out with a girl back back in the '90s, early '90s, and I was so excited to get this game. And I, she had access to a car. A friend of hers drove her up to the mall, and I gave her like eighty dollars. I'm like, oh my god, Seven Saga! I just called them. It's there. Can can you grab it for me? So she went up with her friends, and she came back with this package, and she gave it to me. And getting an RPG in the Super Nintendo back then was a really huge deal. It was like, oh my god, you were like in awe of it. You couldn't believe it. So I took it out and I looked at the box art. The box art is wonderful. I started playing the game. The music is excellent. But why couldn't I connect with Seven Saga? Everything was right. The graphics weren't bad. As I say, the music was really cool. Box art was fine. Nothing, you know. It's just a real slog of a game. And I mean a slog, I'm creating my own words here. Just for leveling and for acquiring new equipment, it is a major, major time sink, which 
I'm the first to say I played so many RPGs. I've almost played all the RPGs that have been released in consoles. They're all time sinks into level grinding. Yes, of course they are. That's what it is. You fight monsters, you gain experience, you gain money. But this thing is in Seven Saga, it's all done at a very reduced rate, at a very slow rate. So in a typical game, like say, I'll say like Fantasy Star, you go out and you fight a bunch of monsters outside of town, you kill all of them, you go back into town, you see, you know, you heal, go back, and you go, you rinse back and forth, and eventually you gain levels and gain money and you buy better equipment, and you feel like you're progressing and you're doing well. Where in Seventh Saga, I never ever felt like I was getting anywhere, even when I was getting somewhere. The leveling, you level up, obviously, and you level up rather fast to a certain point, and then it's just super slow, and you're, you're out for hours leveling. But that's not the only thing. Weapons are expensive. Items are really expensive. So you're leveling up to gain more money, and you just, it's made, most of the game is just you in a field going back and forth, back and forth, which is wonderful. I like combat in RPGs more than anyone, but this, really tested me. It really, it was the first Super Nintendo RPG that I was like, I, I can't do this. It asked too much of me. It asked way too much of me. And let me tell you, I wasn't working back then. I, I had nothing but time on my hands. I think I was like 17 or 18 years old. I, I had nothing but time, but, but I just, the, 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 the slog of, of, of Seven Saga just wore me out and I say it had everything going for it but it just wore me down and I could never connect to Seven Saga but when I put on that opening music it still takes me back to the early 90s and I shed a small tear. Now at my friend Andrew's place he had a bunch obviously of video games that I never had and one of them was Hydlide and I I must admit I, I saw the cover for Hydlide back in the day and I was like wow Hide like this is this looks like Dragon Warrior, and I started to get really excited because I enjoy Dragon Warrior. And then I watched him play it, and I realized how much it was not like Dragon Warrior, and how horrible it was. I, I just couldn't connect to Hide Light. I was like, oh, that's not for me, and I just moved on from my life. And the Genesis had just come out, and we were getting RPGs. Oh my god, by the truckload and really good ones, you know. Fantasy Star 2 was coming out, Sword of Vermilion, with the promise of other ones, like Super, Super Highlight. Highlight. Now, my friend Andrew didn't get this game, but another friend of ours did. His name was Dave Penfold, and we always used to have the craziest arguments with him. I'm going to mention him in the future, but... Super Highlight, he had this game and he finally lent it to Andrew and I was so excited and I ran over there and I started to play it over at his place and I was absolutely mortified. I mean, the main character was like, am I going to use the word slogging every day at time today? Just like slogging up the screen, it was just chugging along. Uh, the frame rate was just really like, whoa, like you're like stuttering as you're walking and I'm like, and the characters are so small, the game world is so uninteresting. But, you know, you went and talked to people in town, I was so uninspired. I really was, I was like, this is the fucking game? I couldn't believe it. And then we get outside, and it's just the most boring overworld, with like little enemies placed all over. And I was totally uninspired by the game, and I, I was so disappointed because, look at that, the box art looked wonderful. The screenshots in the back and the write-up made it sound sound like a, a really exciting adventure. I couldn't wait to go on. I like the Genesis was promising next you know generation RPGs. Super Highlight was not one of them. And a big joke was always the encumbrance. When your character held uh, too many weapons and items, you couldn't move. It was a. I remember my friend Andrew always talking about that back in the day. We were, we would laugh about it because encumbrance was a big thing that we used to talk about in Dungeons and Dragons. And we would always be like, how many items can we really carry? And there's always an encumbrance law that our DM put on us. But there was an encumbrance law in a fucking video game? Really? In an RPG? What the fuck? It was crazy, but... Man, those are some games, and I don't, as I say, I don't hate these games at all. I have a lot of fond memories. I had to own all the physical copies of the games because there's such memories of, you know, going in, being excited, going, yes, 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 oh, god damn it. This is not what I was hoping it would be, but guys, down below, tell me about an RPG that you were so excited to play. You bought it, you put it in, and you're like, damn it. <laughs> 
So anyways, guys, until next time.